let's talk about the wonderful world of food freedom. So let's just start with a basic definition with what exactly is food freedom and how can it be beneficial for you and why is it necessary? So I looked around the internet for some examples and definitions of exactly what food freedom is. And the best one that I found is from an article called What is Food Freedom, which I will link in the show notes. And it was defined as eating in alignment with your values without stress, anxiety, guilt, or shame. And I really want to focus in on those four words of stress, anxiety, guilt, and shame. Those are the things that we tend to cling on to that make the eating experience less enjoyable and a lot more stressful, which really, I mean, because we have to eat to survive, right? So it can really make it difficult to have, I guess, a normal day or a normal relationship with food when we're feeling all of these negative feelings around the eating experience. So let's talk about some of the ways that we can, or that food freedom can manifest in your life. So first of all, it can look like not obsessing over your next meal or the next thing you're going to eat all day. I noticed that this was, this happened a lot for me. I was thinking about food all day long, especially if I had meal planned or I had like a specific eating schedule, like a very specific, like, especially when I was into bodybuilding, I had a very specific eating schedule of um, eating like every two hours at exactly certain times, whether or not I was hungry. So that was one time where food was constantly on my mind. And then another time less related to that was because at that time I felt that I was eating enough. So I didn't feel hungry between meals. I almost felt like I was eating too much and, but I still had to focus so much on food. And then on the other hand there, when I was on more restrictive meal plans where I was left hungry in between meals and I didn't feel like I was eating enough, then I was constantly thinking about food because I was so hungry, but I wasn't allowing myself to eat. So when you experience food freedom, you don't really think about food very often, except around the time where you start to get hungry or you know, you're thinking of like planning ahead of, I know I'm usually going to get hungry within the next hour. So it's time to start thinking about what I'm going to make for my next meal. And that's really about it. It can also look like being able to enjoy the foods that you love without feeling guilty. Again, that word guilt comes up. So even when say you're between a diet or between a meal plan and you're supposed to have the freedom to eat whatever you want for a temporary amount of time, you're still kind of, um, you're still conditioned to believe that certain foods are good or bad or that you're good or bad for eating those foods. So it can make you make it really hard for you to enjoy those foods completely guilt-free. You're still kind of like in the back of your head thinking, that you're doing something wrong, really. It can also look like being able to honor your health through incorporating a variety of foods that contain high nutritional value. And these are what we often refer to as whole foods. Things like fruits like watermelon or baked potatoes or things like that, that diet culture has taught us even are bad for us. So we have this really warped sense of what foods are good for us and what are bad for us that can get really confusing based on conflicting information. So again, you just get left, you're left feeling guilty for pretty much anything that you choose to eat. And it's hard for you to actually sit down and enjoy a meal unless it's like perfectly deemed Um, correct under whatever plan or diet um, paradigm you're following. So another example of food freedom is not allowing food to dictate your life, your relationships, especially if you are used to being on strict plans or you meal prep or whatever, and say you skip social events or you judge your friends for what they eat, or you feel like they judge you for what you eat. Maybe you have become known as like the fit girl or the nutrition queen or whatever, and your friends 
then expect you to always be perfect. I know that was definitely the case for me and it made it really hard for me to feel okay eating certain things in front of people. Those were the things that I ate in secret with a lot of shame because I didn't want anyone to know that I actually really did enjoy those foods sometimes. Another great thing about food freedom is you stop allowing food to dictate how you feel about yourself. And by that, I mean specifically like your, what foods that you choose to eat. Again, going back to feeling like, oh, I'm good or I'm bad today, or um, I am a healthy person or unhealthy person. You stop putting yourself in one specific box and realize that you are a human being, which makes you dynamic, which makes you flexible, which makes you different at different times of the day, the week, the seasons, seasons of your life. And you allow space for you to have different food preferences and desires and hunger levels. Um, And then, so the bottom line when it comes to food freedom is the overall goal is to just allow food to be food. And through food, we experience a mixture of fuel and pleasure. So I've seen some, I guess, quotes or statements out there that say, you know, treat food as fuel, just fuel, and you'll never have any issues. And while it's true that, yes, food is a major source of fuel as humans for us to survive, there's also a pleasure element that as human beings, we often forget about. And You'll realize this is true for you if you think about the times that either you're distracted when you eat a meal or you feel guilty for eating it so you just gobble it down or you're not really paying attention or you're just eating something that you don't really enjoy but you're eating it because you think that you should be eating it. And those are the times when you'll finish the meal and you'll suddenly be scrounging for more, even though you're not necessarily hungry physically. So you don't really need the fuel, but there's something missing. And that missing piece is the satisfaction factor, which is again, feeling satisfied with your eating experience. So have you ever been on not even necessarily diet, even if you're focused on clean eating and you feel like you should substitute certain foods for other foods. So say you really want just a real dark gooey brownie, like the real thing, but you also want to focus on clean eating and you feel that it's not good for you to have that brownie. So instead you have either the substitute for that or you try and eat something else and you just find yourself eating thing after thing and not feeling satisfied. And then eventually you allow yourself to have an actual brownie or you give into that temptation and then you end up binging and eating like five brownies in one sitting and you start back to that self-perpetuating cycle of eating um, perfectly followed by binge eating and real and believing that either you're addicted to sugar, you're addicted to brownies or that you're out of control around food when really all that was missing that entire time was maybe the satisfaction piece. So eating is one of the most pleasurable experiences that we enjoy as humans. It again is a day to, or a way to incorporate pleasure into your daily life. So for the rest of this episode, we're going to talk about five benefits of food freedom. That way, if your mindset isn't quite there, or maybe you're starting to realize that you want to heal your relationship with food or make peace with food, but your mind isn't quite there, or you're not exactly sure why it's so important for you to do that. And then, um, so once you get there, then I'll share three tips for achieving food freedom so that once you have decided how you want this to benefit your life, you can start to take some simple steps toward making that happen. And I'm sharing five benefits that I have noticed and that I've learned from others through the research I've done, through reading the book, Intuitive Eating, and um, just seeing what the overall benefits of healing your relationship with food and 
getting really for some people and this was the case for me it is literally getting your life back making peace with food in your body allows you to do all the things that you've been putting off until you felt that you were thinner or more perfect in whatever way that looks like so actually the first thing that inspired me to create this week's episode I was taking a nap yesterday afternoon and I woke up just thinking about randomly thinking about how I used to have such brain fog that I couldn't think clearly for the longest time. And I started my first diet, my first really official diet around the age of 11. And then I was off and on with dieting until I was 25. I'm now 31. So I've had what you can call food freedom for about six years, but I was just randomly thinking about how I used to not be able to think straight. Like my mind genuinely felt muddy all the time and I couldn't really process things. It was hard for me in conversation. And, um, and I was thinking about how much better it feels now that I can think clearly and that I feel like I have the energy to have conversations or create content or do everything that I'm able to do now that I wasn't before. And I had thought at the time that something was wrong with me or my brain, or I had thought it was because I was unhealthy and I needed to be healthier. But what was really happening, what I believe is that I was malnourished and my body was more focused on the process of I guess, survival than it was all the extra stuff that comes one year. Um, I think like based on Maslow's hierarchy of needs, I want to say I was down a little bit lower than I am now to where I have the space to think clearly. And related to that, the second benefit that I've noticed was that I also was experiencing a lot of irritability and crazy mood swings for the longest time. Again, I thought it was related to my hormones. I thought there was something wrong with me. And yes, I do have a hormonal imbalance, but I don't have the extreme mood swings that I used to when I was restricting or dieting or trying to control what I ate. And again, I thought that this was just a part of me that I was just a moody person But what was really happening is that I was dealing with hanger. I was really hungry sometimes and denying myself food. And of course, that's exhausting. And you're not really in a good mood when you're not feeling well, right? The other part was having a having low blood sugar, whether that was between meals or from not eating enough. And this happened especially the turning point for me was when I started intermittent fasting and I made myself wait until 1 PM every day to eat. And by then I was so ravenous and I couldn't think straight at my job. I was a mentor in the position that I was in. So I was supposed to be teaching people the job, but I couldn't even form sentences. Like I'm not even exaggerating. I couldn't, I was almost like a zombie all day long. My workday was from 7 a.m. to noon, and then I would get home around 1 p.m. and open the fridge and just like shovel food into my mouth and devour everything that I could get my hands on. And again, that was part of the reason why I felt like I really needed to look at my relationship with food and that there was some work that needed to be done because to me, it was not a good quality of life. I thought that the goal was to be the healthiest version of myself, but I felt that something was missing and that that's not what true health should look like, that I shouldn't be tortured like that. So that was the second benefit that I experienced is that I no longer had the crazy mood swings and irritability. So no more brain fog, no more irritability. And then the third, I learned that life is about so much more than just food and eating. And this was hard for me when I was so focused on food and exercise because I was working so hard to manipulate my body size and shape. And it was all I could focus on. It was almost like a full-time job for me. It was almost like a personality. Like my personality was 
going to the gym and counting my macros or meal prepping or whatever. And even if you ever had a conversation with me, that's all I could think about or talk about. And that was what my relationships and friendships were based around. And I noticed I pushed a lot of people away during that time. And it was hard for me to connect and make friends because I felt like I was judging everyone around me because I was judging myself so harshly. And I never felt like I was good enough. And this was even, even when I was focused on a simple diet or a meal plan, or if I had to calorie or macro count, it took up so much of my mental capacity and so much of my energy that could have been used elsewhere that I now use elsewhere. And it feels so good now that I've simplified food so that I can focus my energy on other places that I've realized I value so much more than what I look like on the outside or how perfect my body looks. And these are things like relationships or friendships or life experiences, being able to enjoy restaurants, especially with us now living in Okinawa, Japan, you know, being able to go to a restaurant and not have to stress, does this fit my macros? Am I going to be able to eat anything at this restaurant? Can I drink an alcoholic beverage if I want to? Or, you know, going golfing or going to the beach and not feeling worried that I'm going to skip or miss a workout or not eat my meal in time. Like I, I think if you're anything like me and you can easily cling on to the mindset of being a perfectionist, it is really easy to take something simple like counting your macros or calories and take it to the extreme to where it becomes not just like a simple thing that you do, but it determines how you feel about yourself at the end of the day and whether or not you feel like a success or a failure. So that was the third benefit that I have experienced through achieving food freedom. The fourth one is finding pleasure in food instead of guilt. This one has literally changed my life. I used to feel so much guilt for eating foods that I enjoyed. You know, we're given this message of like, this is a sinful food. This is a guilt-free food. And So when I ate the foods that I thought were the sinful ones, I often ate them without focus. And a lot of times it was in the fridge standing up quickly before anyone saw me, or it was when my now husband at the time boyfriend would leave, he would be gone and I would binge. That's when I would plan my binges. I used to feel guilty for just enjoying food at all in any capacity. And so now it feels really good to unapologetically enjoy the foods that I love. The foods that I enjoy aren't just, and actually surprisingly usually aren't, the foods that we normally think of as junk foods that feel so taboo that we tend to think that we're addicted to them when again, really what it is is the restriction and the way that we feel about them. And um I'm actually surprised at how much now I enjoy foods like watermelon, as I said earlier, baked potato, rice and veggies sauteed in olive oil make all the difference versus just plain with nothing on them. And these are foods that have often been deemed fattening or bad for you. At least that's what I learned from my dieting days. So it again felt like I should be guilty for eating or enjoying pretty much anything because at one point or another, based on whatever diet or plan or thing I was following, there was the foods that would be good for me, quote unquote, good for me on one plan would be bad for me on another one. So I was just so confused to the point where I actually started to go to school at UNLV. I started studying nutrition sciences when I was really deep in my disordered eating behaviors because I wanted to find the perfect diet because I was so confused about the conflicting information and I wanted to know what is the perfect way to eat. And what I learned along the way is that I had a very disordered relationship with food and that there really is no one perfect way to eat, especially because 
we all have different genetics and bodies and preferences and needs. And so what works for one person doesn't work for everybody. From that, I learned to stop looking at someone who says that, oh, try out this meal plan or this thing because it really worked for me. Because I realized that they're an individual with their own needs, again, needs, preferences, and all that. And just because it worked for them doesn't mean that it's going to work for me. And so I'm torturing myself by trying to put myself in a box and then feeling guilty and ashamed when I don't fit into that box. So that was the fourth benefit. And then the last benefit that I found from achieving food freedom is that you stop binging and feeling out of control around food. And what I found most interesting because binges for me were a lifelong behavior from the time that I was first teased for my weight and my size and I started to feel guilty for eating um, and being quote unquote overweight and I felt that I didn't deserve food. I didn't, especially didn't deserve to enjoy food until I was skinny or worthy enough, which by the way, I never got to that point. But what was crazy to me was when I stopped restricting food and I changed the way that I feel about food, my binges were gone almost immediately, like almost overnight. And I have not had a binge in over five years or yeah, at least over five years. Now, keep in mind that binging and emotional eating are different things. I do still eat emotionally sometimes, and I do it with conscious awareness, knowing and choosing it as a coping mechanism. The difference between that and binges is that binges felt out of my control. I felt like I actually lost consciousness in a binge and that someone else was controlling my body and I wasn't able to stop what was going on. And that hasn't happened to me since I stopped restricting food or feeling guilty for the foods that I eat. And I've actually since learned from dietitians who help in eating disorder recovery that this is the case for a lot of their patients who experience binges, that one of the first things that stop once they start to work on their relationship with food and stop restricting is that the binges just go away just like that. Of course, this isn't the case for everybody. Just keep that in mind. So if say you stop restricting and you're still binging, keep working with it. Sometimes there will be a mental restriction that you're not completely aware of. Maybe in the back of your mind, you're still thinking that these certain foods are going to cause a negative outcome in your life. Or maybe in the back of your mind, you're thinking oh, I'm just going to try this out and see if it works. And if it doesn't, then I'm going to go back on a diet. You have to get your mind and your body to trust that you are not going to go back into your restrictive ways. And that's when you start to realize that you are safe and you can enjoy the foods that you want to enjoy without feeling pressured to stock up on all the foods that are bad for you that you won't be able to eat once you're back on that diet. And you stop feeling so out of control with food because again, you're not trying to fit yourself into this little box and being quote unquote perfect when it comes to exactly what you eat and when you eat, you actually have more freedom to have flexibility in your eating experience. You're less likely to eat things out of rebellion because that can also be a diet behavior or a side effect of diet and restrictive behaviors is rebellious that you're eating something because maybe someone makes a comment on it or you feel like you shouldn't be eating it so you're going to rebel and eat it anyway so really at the end of the day you start to allow space for flexibility for preference for variety all of those come together in your eating experience And again, food just starts to feel like food. It's no longer tied to so many negative emotions or your feelings of self-worth. It's not what determines your self-worth. You realize that it's you that validates that you're enough. And once you decide that you're enough, you start to make loving choices for yourself because you realize that you're worth it. 
All right, so that, those were five of the benefits that you can experience through food freedom. Now let's talk about three tips that you can start to implement for achieving food freedom. The first thing you want to do is just start to neutralize food in your mind, meaning not looking at foods in terms of good or bad or healthy or unhealthy, just looking at it in terms of what it is, food. And so neutralize food. Imagine that you have a whole buffet of anything that you could ever want in front of you. Look at that and then tune into how you're feeling. How hungry are you feeling right now? What exactly are you craving? What sensation are you wanting? And if you had a buffet in front of you of whatever you could have, and you knew that you could have that food anytime in the future, there were no restrictions ever, what exactly would you want in this moment? So start to just look at food in terms of preference. And this might feel a little bit dangerous at first, especially if you're not used to, especially if you feel that if you're going to become out of control when you do allow yourself to eat whatever you want. But there is something called habituation, which basically means that we're naturally wired to get bored with things, habituation, things that we do or things that we eat day in and day out, it's natural for us to get bored and move on from those things. So at first you may think, oh, I really love pizza. So if I allow myself to eat whatever I want, I'm just gonna eat pizza every day, all day. But what you don't realize is that after a week or two, if you have unconditional permission to eat as much pizza as you want, you're gonna get bored of it and you're gonna move on. And so at first, when you start this, just depending on how long food restriction has been going on for you, you might notice that you do crave a lot of things that you previously deemed unhealthy. These are known as your forbidden foods. And for me, I had a long list of forbidden foods that I had collected over the years. So it did take a while for me to move through each forbidden food. What really helped along the way was still continuing to tune into my body and recognize whether or not I really wanted something or if I was just eating it out of, again, rebellion or for any other reason. And still in that case, sometimes you will choose to eat something emotionally or because you just want to and you're not necessarily hungry or craving it pay attention and take notes to those experiences because they can teach you something. And moving forward, if you bring consciousness into the food choices that you make, it allows you to get better at making the best choice for yourself in each moment. So the second tip for achieving food freedom is to make a commitment to eat distraction-free at least once a day. Just start there, whether it's breakfast, lunch, dinner, or snacks in between. Doing this is going to allow you to get in tune with your body to help you pay attention to whatever your hunger level is. Are you completely ravenous? Are you somewhere in between? Are you full? And if you are distracted when you're trying to know when it's best for your body, when your body's guiding you to stop eating, if you're distracted, you're going to miss that signal. So eating distraction-free allows you to find that I've noticed that the best way for me to eat quote unquote distraction free, because I know I say distraction free, but what I really mean is not in front of a TV or zoning out to something. So it's nice to let maybe light a candle, have some music going on in the background or a podcast or something, but being able to listen to what your body's telling you throughout the experience. Again, paying attention to how does my body feel in each moment, like assessing your hunger levels maybe on a scale of one to 10 along the way. So stopping a few times throughout your meal and thinking, you know, where is my hunger level right now? Am I satisfied right now? Could I stop eating right now? Do I want to keep eating a few more bites? Do I feel full, but I'm really enjoying this food. So maybe I want to take one more bite or two more bites or, you know, kind of push the edge a little bit and see how that works for me. So that's the second tip. And then the last tip for achieving food freedom is making a mental or a physical list of the foods that you really enjoy that also make you feel good. And this list is going to vary over time. And maybe even, especially if you're a woman, based on the time of the month that you're in, 
you're going to have a preference for different foods. And maybe even you can start to track what foods make you feel good at different parts of say your cycle or the month or whatever. So what's really fun about the process of healing your relationship with food is that you get to start to experiment with foods and the way that they make you feel. And you get to do this judgment free. So it stops feeling like a really negative experience around food and you start to have really positive eating experiences. If you don't already cook at home, I recommend starting to do that as well. And just experimenting with all different types of ingredients and foods and getting curious about which ones you really do enjoy and then which ones you thought that you enjoyed but realized that they were forbidden foods and that's why they that's why you were drawn toward them but you realize if I actually sit down and pay attention I don't really like this food how it tastes or I don't really like how it makes my body feel and so I'm gonna skip that Sometimes we still choose to eat foods that don't make our bodies feel good. And again, you just get curious about that experience. So afterwards, if say you're not feeling well, you want to start to ask yourself, was it because I ate a lot of that? Was I not listening to my body when it signaled me to stop? Do I feel like I could just eat less of that next time and feel okay? Was it worth this temporary discomfort for me to enjoy that food? Am I feeling really satisfied and feeling less like I need to scrounge around and try to find more to eat? The overall idea and theme is just getting used to becoming curious and non-judgmental when it comes to how you eat and what you choose to eat. So to summarize what we've talked about in this episode, so step one, you want to start to work on your mindset with food, start to develop trust with yourself and knowing that you do have the ability and your body does have the ability to guide your eating decisions in a healthy way. And then step two from there is to begin taking action and actually implementing ways for you to experience exactly what food freedom can feel like and what it looks like for you personally, because it's going to look different for everybody. Remember, as you go through all of this, that it's not a linear process and it's definitely not going to look perfect, which I know is hard for some of us. Again, that perfectionist mindset likes to come in and try and take charge And some days are going to be harder than others. Sometimes you'll even go through a season where you know that you are going to continue to not restrict foods, but you feel like you really should or want to, or maybe you start to dive back into the guilt, or maybe you're gaining weight and that's really hard for you. And so you want to go back into that restriction, but you feel like you can't because you're too far gone. And so you're wrestling with that. Every time that happens, go back into the curiosity of what is going on. What do I think I need right now? And how can I start to nurture and nourish myself more deeply? It takes a while to unlearn everything that you've been taught around food and to change your patterns and behaviors around food, especially if you have a habit of emotionally eating as your primary coping mechanism or binge eating. And if you need to work with a dietitian, I definitely recommend that if you have the availability to you. I do recommend finding a non-diet or anti-diet dietitian who again is going to teach you how to tune more into your body instead of outside sources to determine what you're going to eat. So just be patient with yourself and trust the process. Remind yourself often of why you've chosen this route, how it's going to benefit you and how it's going to add to your life. All right. That's all I have for you this week. Did you enjoy this episode? If so, please share it with a friend or leave me a five-star review on iTunes. That's how we can get more people to see this message and spread the love. So I would love to know, what was your biggest takeaway from the episode? 
I would love if you'd come share with me, hang out with me on Instagram. I'm at Lauren M. Kendrick. You can either tag me in your stories or your posts, or you can just DM me directly. I really enjoyed chatting with you this week, and I can't wait to chat with you again next week.